the KDLM studios, it's time for HodgePodge, presented by Partnership for Health and airing on Lakes TV3. Good morning. Welcome into HodgePodge. It is Tuesday, July 27th. And of course, being the last Tuesday of the month, that means we are joined by Karen Nitkorski from Partnership for Health via our Zoom studios. Karen, great to see you on the screen this morning. How you been? I've been great. How about you? I've been fantastic. Hard to believe we're already at the end of almost the end of July with August uh, looking at just around the corner. But it's been a busy, busy summer. We've got a couple of topics we want to touch on. Now, what do you want to start with first this morning? Well, I want to thank your community for supporting Partnership for Health. Um, we, um, Partnership for Health came into existence really in 2009 as legislation for preventative health came through Governor Pawlenty's office. And we've been around ever since, but every two years we have to go back to the legislature and prove ourselves. And because of support of people throughout Becker County, Detroit Lakes and the other counties we work in, we have been renewed again. And so we wanna thank your community for the support. Really what our jobs are is we are considered a program or a partnership under the Minnesota Department of Health. We are in their budget, but still we need to say to legislators every two years, we're making a difference. And we're making a difference because of all the partners we have. And really what our goal is, is to make the healthy choice, the easy choice, easy choice, but it's all about preventing disease associated with obesity and tobacco use. So again, thank you to the community of Detroit Lakes and surrounding area for letting us partner with you and supporting us during these times when we have to go back to the legislature and say, we're making a difference. Well, I think uh, it's uh, great that you guys are making a difference. Obviously, not in our community, but throughout, not just our community, but throughout our communities, uh, throughout the listening area. Karen, uh, what's the process for this? Do you have to like present kind of a case uh, and say, hey, this is what we've done in the last uh, couple of years, so we're, we're good again? Or just maybe walk us through the process. Yeah, we do need to um, reach out to our legislators and, and give them the data of who we've touched and what kinds of policy systems and environmental changes that we've implemented into these communities. And, you know, with COVID, it's honestly, I'm not sure we moved the needle on very many things because, but we were there during COVID to help with things like food pantries or some other immediate needs um, in communities, uh, as well as many of the ship people were deployed to help with vaccinations and and other kinds of things. But I know I was re sort of redeployed to help with all of the food pantries in the area. Karen, we've got very warm temperatures today. We've got very warm temperatures of most of last week, maybe by Thursday, a little bit of a break. Uh, people are out and about, kids and adults, and everybody's a little bit thirsty. And I'm just going to ask the question. OK, so what is the Department of Health's guidelines as far as the use of uh, drinking fountains? Well, that I wanted to bring it up because I wonder, I wonder when now I look at drinking fountains, can I use them? And um, the Minnesota Department of Health released guidance on water fountains and hydration stations last week. They're an important resource in public spaces and schools, especially during summer when heat and dehydration can be the most dangerous. The risk of getting COVID-19 from touching a solid surface like a water fountain button is low and COVID-19 has not been found in drinking water. Therefore, water fountains and bottle fillers can be used during the pandemic. However, shutting off water fountains or other fixtures for long periods of time can increase the risk of water quality problems, including growth of dangerous bacteria like Legionella. So buildings and fixtures that have low use or are in unoccupied spaces should be reactivated with care. So, and it is advisable to continue daily cleaning and disinfection of high touch surfaces, including water fountains. So go ahead and use water fountains is the message. And if you need proof yourself, you can go to the, to the Minnesota Department of Health website and look under water, water fountains and hydration stations, and you can find the actual guidance on their website. 
I think uh, I think you'll see a lot of people using those hydration stations here for the next couple of days with our warm temperatures. Uh, that kind of kind of leads us into our next topic a little bit. Uh, so talk a little bit about rethink your drink. Well, I just thought I'd try to stay on the same topic a little bit about drinking water. And really, that is really the best thing you can do for your body as far as as drinking. And um, a lot of times we don't think about the calories. So it's kind of a mindless sort of action to go to a drink. And you don't really think about the calories and sugar, sugary beverages. You just so then you think, well, what kind of what kind of um, beverages should we be drinking? And so water is the best. But if you need more flavor, think about adding berries or slices of lime, lemon, or cucumber to water. How about if you're missing fizzy drinks? A lot of people like the carbonated drinks. Add a splash of 100% juice to plain sparkling water. Or a refreshing low for a refreshing low calorie drink. You want your drinks to be low calorie, and and you can have coffee. Just don't overdo it. Um, if you need help drinking the habit, so you don't want to stock up on sugary um, drinks, so don't put them in your house. <laughs> That's easy said than done because we a lot of us have habits of instead keep a jug or bottles of cold water in the fridge. So if water just won't do, reach for drinks that contain important nutrients such as low fat or fat-free milk, fortified milk alternatives, or 100% fruit or vegetable juice. If you're at a coffee shop, maybe skip the flavored syrups or whipped cream. Ask for a drink with low fat or fat-free milk, a milk alternative such as soy or al almond, or just get back to the basics and just drink black coffee. Or the basics would be water. At a vending machine, read the nutrition facts. You know, I've worked with Otter Tail County and they went from 16 ounce pops to 12 ounce pops. Just that alone makes a huge difference. So um, you want those low in calories um, and low in saturated fats. If you're on the go, carry a reusable water bottle with you and refill it throughout the day. Still thirsty, link how, learn how to drink more water. <laughs> I love that, that might all be boring, but it's really good for us to have water. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you a trip down memory lane. Uh, do you remember? And then of course, Karen and I are on screen, so the rest of you are just kind of listening. You remember uh, back in the '70s, the little uh, plastic portable cups? They were plastic. They were round, with like a compact case for women's makeup, and you took the top off, and they just kind of popped up, and they were just a little plastic. Do you remember those? Yeah. Yeah, I still have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep it in my truck uh, because you just never know when you need a portable plastic. My grandmother gave it to me. My late grandmother gave it to me. I've kept it all these years. That's just kind of one of those neat things. I, I don't use it often, but uh, it is nice every once in a while. It's like, oh, I, I've got that plastic uh, cup right there in, in the truck. So uh, when you rethink your drink, uh, make sure you're drinking lots of water. I am going to ask one more question about uh, rehydration. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, not so much energy drinks, let's talk about the Powerades, the Gatorades. Uh, those have sugar in them, but they do have some sugar-free alternatives for both Gatorade and Powerade. Uh, your thoughts on uh, those type of uh, rehydrations? Well, I would just say that, um, because I, I don't want to say no completely. I want to say get the smaller sizes okay. and then try to alternate if you really need a powerade or a gatorade try to alternate between water and those and get the smaller size uh, what about pedialyte i know a lot of people are uh, very uh, big on pedialyte what are your thoughts on that you know i don't really know anything about okay. that so i'm gonna just <laughs> decline sorry no problem we're gonna take a break here on hodgepodge when we come back in our second segment where we talk about uh, some farmers markets school lunches and a uh, healthy school summit, which is coming up here in the month of August. Stick around. Back with more HodgePodge on this Tuesday right after these. Karen's back with us. Uh, just this reminder, Becker County Food Pantry is opening up in about five minutes. They've got a lot of produce they're looking to get rid of today. It's going to go until about 2.30 or until the food runs out. Wide variety of fresh produce today available at the Becker County Food Pantry. And that kind of brings us into our second half of our discussion, Karen. Uh, we want to talk a little about uh, farmers markets going around throughout the area. One of my favorite things about summer is fresh fruits and vegetables. And um, we really want to um, promote farmers markets because 
the, those, the food that you buy at the farmer's market is higher in nutrients and more tasty. And the reason is, it doesn't have to travel across the country. Um, so it, we really want to support those local farmers. And on Saturdays and Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. behind Zorba's and the People's Park, you can um, partake in your local farmer's market. And also they take SNAP or EBT, which is really another word for food stamps. And do not feel uh, bad if you need to use those. We want you to use those if you are in that um, demographic because we want you to go there and we want you to get these fr fresh fruits and vegetables. So the other thing I wanted to bring up is all three school districts in Baker County, Frazee, Lake Park, Audubon, and Detroit Lakes are providing free meals for children ages zero to 18. And if you haven't taken advantage of this, or maybe you recently found you're having to stretch your budget further than usual, contact the school districts to see how you can take advantage of these meals. They run through the second week in August, ending either on the 11th or 12th. And some need to be picked up daily, daily, others weekly. So contact your school district if you want to take advantage of those meals. And they're for everybody. It doesn't matter what demographic you're in. Karen, do you know how long that uh, school lunch program will run? Um, through August. And then I do not do not know, unfortunately, I forgot to ask our registered dietitian if meals are going to be free again this next year. You know, they have been free since the pandemic started. Um, for everybody. I do not know about this next school year, but you can find out with your school district. So these free meals go through next, not just next week, but the following week through the 11th or 12th of August. Karen, our final topic I want to dive into this morning. Uh, tell us about the Healthy Schools Summit, which is coming up here in August. Well, we typically do it in April and we had it all designed for April of 2020. And of course, we know what happened then. And so we're going to a virtual format. And because it's virtual, we've really been able to bring in impressive national speakers, some regional speakers, and even some local educational experts. It's on August 4th, Wednesday, August 4th, from 8.30 to 3.30. And if you're interested in attending, there's three keynotes. The last one is going to be Heather Semenich, who is... Um, one of the best speakers I've ever heard. She touches my heart. She, she talks about filling your cup. So if you're an educator or if you're a PTA or PTO member, or if you are engaged with schools at all, this would be a great day of learning for you. And um, we'll have a session. We have some breakout sessions, once on vaping, which has become an ep epidemic among our youth. A national expert will share parent engagement strategies and our own principal of Roosevelt, Trish Mariotti, and three Roosevelt staff will share how they're implementing trauma-sensitive training um, strategies in their classroom. So it's going to just be a wonderful day and you can si still sign up. It's free. It's virtual. It's on Zoom and you can contact me to learn how to get um, registered for this day. And my contact information is, um, all my phone is 701-371-9644, or you can email me at K-N-I-T-Z-K-O-R-S-K-I at gmail.com. Those are mouthfuls, both of those. And you're probably driving, and how do you even do this? Joel can get a hold of me if you we need can, to. Just email KD11 at broadcasting.com. We can get you in touch. Yep. Karen, now we got so about a minute left. Is there great. anything else you want to touch on? Um, just to let people know, it'll be a great day of learning. Um, we have 200 people already signed up, and in a typical year, we don't even have 100. So we're excited to have that kind of response to this Healthy School Summit on August 4th. And we just want to, again, thank your community for your partnering uh, with Partnership for Health to really make the healthy choice the easy choice. Karen, we appreciate your time with us every month. Have a great rest of July, and then we'll talk again coming up in August. Great. Thank you. All right, thank you. That is Karen Nitzkortsky again, Partnership for Health, and that is going to wrap up HodgePodge.